Hello, everybody. Welcome to Chin Fat. In uh, these next few episodes I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be going through some of the updates they have available in, uh, in Premiere Pro from to the 2019 updates. And the first thing in this episode I'm going to be covering is mainly the upgrades, it's mainly the updates to the um, to the color grading that, that, that you can do inside of Premiere Pro to the Lumetri color panel. Uh, before I get into that, just one small thing here. You notice up in the top left-hand corner, they've added this little home button here, uh, this little home icon. And all this is for is it's a simple, quick way of bringing up your splash screen. I'm going to click that to all your recent projects. And now you can create a new project starting from here or your open project. So this is kind of a quick way of just, uh, instead of going to file and finding those options under open, recent, or new, uh, if you just click home here, it brings up your splash screen again. So kind of a quick little feature that they've added there. I'm gonna hit escape and get out of that. And I'm going to arrange for color grading by hitting the color icon, by hitting the color uh, workspace up here. Here's our Lumetri color panel up here, and I'm going to move my playhead around so I can select a clip they're going to work on. And uh, one cool thing that they've added here, let me get rid of uh, my waveform here so we just have one scope up. But one thing that they've added that's really, really nice is uh, when you want to add uh, multiple layers of Lumetri color panels onto one clip, you can now do that. You had to kind of manually do it before, and it was a little bit of a workaround, and it was very buggy and didn't work well. But if you want to use one layer for doing secondary color correction, then add another clip and work specifically on uh, maybe primary versus secondary color correction, you can add now add different panels. If we come up here and we decide to start working on this clip here, let's do some primary color correction. I'm going to go to my effect controls tab and I'm going to start doing some grading. If I do under basic grading, if I go under basic correction here and I start messing with something like exposure and contrast here and add a little bit of contrast to this image and uh, we change the color temperature a little bit, let's, uh, let's warm this up a little bit, kind of make this a little bit exaggerated and do a little bit of grading here. We've got, uh, we've done some basic um, primary color correction here. And here it is added, if you go over to your effect controls, you'll notice it has added a Lumetri color effect. And on that effect is applied all these items that I just did over here. These things over in the color, uh, over in the uh, Lumetri color panel are inseparably linked with the numerical values over inside of this thing here. You'll see these changes have been made. Uh, this is uh, like the graphical view of it. And this over here is the numerical view of the exact same thing. What I can do here is I can pull on this Lumetri color panel here and I can say rename. I'm going to rename that one. And I'm going to call this primary and hit OK. And now it just changed that effect that I've been working on to Lumetri, the name primary. And if you go over to this panel, you'll notice over here it says this is a Lumetri color effect and it's added the name primary. Now we can do another Lumetri color panel on this simply by going over to this pull down and adding a Lumetri color effect. Now look what it's done to this clip over here. It's added the, I already got the primary one I've been working on. Now it has the Lumetri color, the, the second one that I've added. I'm gonna go over here and I'm, I'm going to pull this down and I'm going to change this one here. I'm gonna rename it to secondary. Hit okay. And now you'll notice it's got the primary and the secondary. So now if I wanna mess with secondaries just on this individual uh, Lumetri color effect here. I'll just make sure that it's selected, which it is, secondary, and then go down to my secondaries and make this my secondary here. Uh, so maybe we can work on the greens a little bit. I'm going to hit my color icon here and select some of these green colors right down there. I'm going to choose my color gray, and we're going to try to select just the leaves here by hue, saturation, and some uh, luminance here and grab a lot of those greens. And now if I uh, blur that a little bit, blur the edges, turn this off, and now I'm doing secondaries on just those greens. So for now, I don't make the intensify those greens. I can drag those over. I'm going to go way exaggerated. Now you can kind of see what's happening. You see some heavy saturation in the moss and in the leaves over here. But now that is just, let's back that off a little bit. But now that is just added to the secondary panel right there. So I've got two different effects over here on my clips. If I go over here, I hit, let's hit arrow down on these. I've got my prime... I've got my primary and I've got my secondary. If we want to just look at our secondaries here, I can turn off my primaries and it shows what I've done with the secondaries and vice versa. If I turn off my secondary, you can see that green kind of goes away there. You can see that kind of heavy green goes away there and leaves what I've done on my primary color correction. If I turn both of those off, then we're back to what the clip looks like originally. So I'm going to check mark those, turn those on. So that's a really cool feature that they've added. You can go up here, you can add as many Lumetri color effects as you want to. This is almost, if you've worked in something like DaVinci Resolve, this is almost like adding nodes. It's a little bit different. It's a layer system instead of a node system, uh, which isn't as power, this is not as powerful as a node system, but still this adds a lot more power to the color grading inside of Premiere Pro. Moving along here, uh, that's, I've, I've selected another clip here. Another really cool thing that they've added to their color panel is under our curves. They've added a whole lot of curves, a whole lot of curve options. 
if you move down, first of all, they still have the same old curve that you've seen in here uh, for quite some time. It's a little curve that you can add a little bit of contrast to, and you can work specifically with a very specific color channel, like your red channel, your green channel, your blue channel. But the items that they've really added are down here, is under the hue saturation curves. And these hue va and these hue versus saturation curves have replaced that old circle curve that was in here. It was like a color wheel with a, with a little curve line circling it. These have all replaced that, and you have a lot more power here. Uh, you can do the exact same things you did with that with that kind of color wheel curve, but on this one you have a lot more specific uh, color options. You have these verses here, and this is, if you, once again, if you're familiar with uh, Resolve, you'll be somewhat familiar with these uh, options in here. You have hue versus saturation, hue versus hue, hue versus luma, luma versus saturation, and saturation versus saturation. What these basically do, these little versus uh, curves here, is it's going to allow you to select a very specific hue, a very specific uh, uh, color value, like red, green, blue, magenta, any of the colors down here in this color range. And then you can increase the saturation specifically in that hue value. Uh, let's talk specifically maybe about skin color here. We've got kind of this uh, orangish uh, skin color coming off here. Uh, what I can do is I can hit my eyedropper and we can move over and I can click on uh, some of that skin. And what it's going to do is it's going to add three nodes. The middle node is where I selected, where I put that uh, eyedropper in and it selected that exact color. It's in this little kind of red skin colorish here. And now what we can do is we can tone down the saturation of that area. So these are these are the extremes here, this dot and this dot, and then this is the center right here. It's kind of moving over. If I, if I scroll this over, you can kind of see it doesn't share the screen size. It doesn't share screen size there. And there we go. So now I'm going to grab this middle node and I'm going to drag that down. And if you hold down shift, it will lock it to that exact uh, point where it's at. It won't let you. Otherwise, you can kind of vary and move it around. But if you hold down shift after you start moving, it'll let you increase the saturation in that hue or decrease. If I drag that all the way down, look how it's just desaturated his uh, skin completely. If I drag it up, it just oversaturates it. So if you want to have a lot of control over uh, the skin colors here, this is where you do it right here. You can grab this and you can drag it up a little bit and increase a little bit of the skin color there, that kind of the reddish that exists in the skin color there. If you want to widen that range, you can grab these extreme nodes here and change those and it will t it'll open up a big wider range of those skin, of those skin colors colors there. Uh, and the nice thing about this is uh, with this hue versus saturation, you can do it to more than one color inside of your frame here. Here, I'm going to select my eyedropper here and we're going to go, let's say we want to choose some of the greens here. I'm going to move right in the middle of this leaf here and click and notice it adds these three nodes. This middle one is the uh, is the center portion of that green right there. And now we can grab this and we can uh, hold down shift as we drag it up and we can increase the saturation in those greens or we can drag down and decrease the saturation in those, in those greens. Uh, so that's the way hue versus saturation works. Let's move down and we've got hue versus hue. This is kind of a cool new uh, scale here. Uh, hue versus hue means what you can do is you can select a certain cut certain color in the screen and you can actually change the colors of that specific color. Like we've got this headband right there. I'm going to use my, got this kind of bluish headband right here. I'm going to go over to my eyedropper, select that and uh, click right in here and see if we can kind of grab that. And notice it's grabbed the blues in that area, in that area on this uh, headband here. If I grab this and drag it down, it'll automatically bring open this new little vertical line here that goes from, that looks like uh, the same line that we're working with, this horizontal line with the same colors on it. And we can grab that and drag it down and notice, look at the headband as we get down to the reds, it's going to start changing that uh, blue color red. And as I move upwards, it'll start changing that blue color green and so on. So you can literally change colors of a specific uh, uh, item on your screen, uh, especially if it's kind of a nice bright uh, hue. You can easily select that with the eyedropper and then you can mess with this. You can increase the, the range of those blues uh, or you can decrease them as well. And uh, quite a powerful little feature there. Now as we move down, we've got Hue versus Luma. I'm going to move to a different clip here. And uh, Hue versus Luma here is basically, basically you can choose uh, a certain color on your screen here with your eyedropper and you can decrease the luminance in that. You can darken it or brighten it. So let's go specifically with, uh, let's go with his pants here. I'm going to select his pants, a little darker color on his pants here right about there, kind of a mid-range of that. And it brings up, it says that his pants apparently have a lot of blue in it here. Let's grab our luminance and we're going to drag this down. Look what's happening in the pants there. It's kind of that range right on here. It's darkening that. So I grab this and drag it up. You'll notice it is brightening that. It's kind of brightening some values over here in the pants. And let, let's try this again with maybe the skin colors here. I'm going to select uh, kind of this mid-range of his skin colors right there. And I'm going to grab uh, the middle node and drag it down. Watch it'll start darkening up the skin there. So the tone of the skin. So the, so now it is changing not the color of the skin so much as the tone of the skin. And tone we're referencing uh, luminous. To skin tone references darker light skin 
skin doesn't necessarily ref, uh, determine colors. That is that is the skin hue, and the skin tone is your darkness or highlight, or the darkness or lightness of the skin. I drag that up, make it lighter, drag it down, make it darker. So uh, quite a uh, powerful tool there as well. And if you want to clear some nodes on a specific curve, all you have to do is uh, double click on it anywhere, and it will clear, clear up all the nodes on that. So we move down here, we've got Luma versus Saturation. So you can choose uh, brighter parts or darker parts of your image here, or the mid-range. If you go from left to right here, this is the darkest part of your image. This goes up to the mids, and then that goes to your highlight. If you select a very specific portion, uh, say like these highlights right there, you can add a little bit of saturation to those values, or you can de take out, or you can desaturate those areas. Uh, so if we select, uh, let's go to this little bright part on this guy's harness right there. Select, and it's going to be up here closer to the whites. As we grab this, uh, we can drag up the saturation, and we'll end there. There is color existing in those highlights it'll set it will saturate them more or desaturate them and take the color out of them so if you want to get some true kind of white highlights uh, you're able to take uh, and say you got some blue highlights you can go in and select those blue highlights and drag down uh, the luminance and drag down the saturation in those areas and get rid of the blue in those areas and then the last one here is saturation versus saturation so this is if you have something that's overly saturated or under under saturated uh, you can just saturate those areas uh, just by simply using your eyedropper here. Go over and select once again. Let's go, let's go with the skin here. So with this amount of saturation that's in his arm here, we can grab this middle node, drag it up, and it's going to increase the saturation in those in uh, that range of saturation. Uh, so if there's anything else that's like less saturated or, or, or about the same saturated, if it's the same saturation anywhere else, it's going to change those as well. So we're going to grab this and drag it down. And it's notice it's desaturating that uh, kind of color there in the skin. And then as we take it back up, it's increasing it. So, so this is going to be really helpful. One thing that a lot of people have been asking is about uh, what's called uh, the complementary colors, like teal versus uh, orange colors, uh, where you get a nice color contrast in, a, in an image. What you can actually do, I'm going to delete this here, and uh, we're going to work on the skin color here. What we're going to do is uh, very commonly used in movies and video production and color correction now is making people's uh, skin hue and tone kind of look very, very warm and making the rest of the background look kind of teal, um, kind of this bluish color, uh, where you, so then you get a big heavy kind of color contrast between the background of the subject and the eyes really gravitate toward the subject. Uh, so let's do that. Let's work on our first little panel here. I'm going to create uh, two lumetri color panels here. First of all, I'm going to start uh, doing kind of a teal teal wash to this entire image here, including uh, the, our subject here. And we can do that just by going up to basic correction, and I'm going to grab our temperature slider and move it a little bit toward the cool, and uh, maybe even a little bit toward the magenta here, just to kind of get a little more coolish wash to the image. Uh, let's add some contrast as well here, kind of sharpen up that image a little bit, and a uh, teeny bit of exposure there. Okay, so let's look at before and after. Here is uh, before, there's after, and we've got kind of this coolish wash to the image now. And I'm going to go up here, I'm going to rename this to teal. Hit OK. And over here, you'll notice it's changed that to um, that, that panel to teal. I'm going to go up here and click down my effects and say add another color effect. And the second color effect here, I'm going to rename this Skin Hue. And under this uh, secondary panel here, uh, I'm going to go and choose a couple different things here. First, I'm going to mess with curves a little bit, and I'm going to go under hue versus hue. I'm going to select the hue in this in this area and change the hue to more of the uh, regular or kind of warmish skin. Uh, color here. So I'm going to uh, hit my eyedropper here. I'm going to come and select uh, maybe a portion of the skin right there. And uh, I notice it's kind of getting around the magenta-ish range here. Uh, as we grab that, I'm going to drag that down and uh, and get that so it kind of gets that area into the warm. And uh, I could increase this a little bit here by dragging that over and kind of widening. Let's move this over here so we can see more of that. I'm going to move this one over as well. And we're going to kind of find that range there that gets a little bit of warmth back to the skin. Let's do four. Now look at the difference there, then afterwards. And look at the warm color that it's given back to the skin there, the warm skin range that we've got. More, we've taken those kind of cooler skin colors that were added by the first filter and made them back to warm. So now we've got kind of that contrast between the blue background. If you want to exaggerate this a bit, we can even go to, let's go to our HSL secondary on our skin hue uh, lumetri color effect. And I'm going to... I uh, hit my little set color on my secondaries, and we're going to select the skin color right there. And uh, let's go to color grain, see what it's selected. It's selected a bit of the arm. We can increase that there. Let's go, let's grab some on the stomach here as well. Uh, I'm going to turn the color gray back off, and we're going to add some of the darker colors down, the, the darker shades of that skin, and, uh, and then maybe a little bit around the face one more time. 
Let's grab a few different spots here and see what we get. Got a color gray, and now we're getting a lot more of the skin. We can uh, move this up and down. Saturation doesn't seem to be grabbing more of the skin. How about luminance? Luminance is grabbing more of the skin there. There we go. We can slide this back and forth until we maximize the amount of skin that's getting. Notice it's kind of showing colors uh, with some of the portions of the rock there. Uh, so we can uh, just try to get as much of that skin as possible. All right, here it's missing a little bit. Let's go color gray and grab some of those highlights right there and see what it does. All right, now we're getting quite a bit of it there. So now we can uh, grab our blur. We're going to soften up the edges on that on that key there. Soften up the edges a little bit and uh, denoise it a little bit as well and turn off the color gray. Now that we've got a secondary on the, on the skin color there, we can grab this and now watch how we can really warm that up. There, see, this is way exaggerated, obviously, but uh, as we kind of warm up that skin range, it's kind of lays between yellow and red there. I'm just going to do it just a little bit, just a little bit subtle there. And maybe the last thing we can do is go back to our curves and we'll increase the saturation and kind of the, and the brightness levels uh, of the skin here. We can select uh, this portion of the skin right there and we can increase the saturation in the highlights a little bit if we wish to as well. So very powerful stuff here. Let's look at our before and after. Let's go over to our elementary color. Uh, let's turn off our skin hue. I notice uh, I exaggerated it quite a bit just to show you the contrast between the background and the foreground here, what we're doing. And uh, let me turn off the teal. So here's the original footage right there. Now as we hit, turn that on, we've got uh, kind of that teal color to the background there. And now if we turn on the skin hue, uh, I notice it brings back the warmth there. So we can uh, we can just go to basic correction, uh, just the general saturation here. All right, let's go, let's go over to our color panel and do it here. I'm going to go up to basic correction on my on my hue panel and grab saturation and turn it down a little bit if we want to and kind of get that exactly where we want to. Now we've got that nice color contrast between the skin uh, hue and the in, uh, on the subject and the background, and a uh, very nice. Um, kind of color contrast there. So some cool new features added here in the next uh, couple episodes. I will add in the next couple episodes. I'm gonna uh, I'll go over the essential sound panel and some things about it there, and the essential graphics panel as well. So thanks for watching and uh, happy happy color grading.